Thank you, Marian, for reading the God's word for us. Good afternoon, dearly beloved. How are you? Good. <laughs> yeah, as what the elder Jonas prayed, this is an exciting time. Uh, you may have heard already uh, that uh, quite a number of uh, our Chinese fellowship uh, attendees, uh, they are coming forward uh, to be baptized because the Bible says believe and uh, be baptized. So uh, for the next two months, I will not be here. I'll be downstairs every Sunday trying to uh, teach them Christian life, Christian faith, and what this church is all about. Pastor Chi Hong will take over my preaching. Thank you. And you guys pray for me because my uh, Mandarin and uh, Hokkien are rusty. So I need to polish. <laughs> uh, thank you, uh, this uh, worship team, uh, for leading us in the worship and uh, especially I thank Faith for uh, leading us in the singing. Uh, some of the songs are very meaningful but difficult to sing. So at least uh, we can sing it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Chinese New Year is coming. Yes? Ah, okay. So have you done your spring cleaning or not? No? Not yet. A business... Uh, so called the unfinished business. Today, I want to talk about unfinished business, uh, which may also relate uh, to a spring cleaning. I want to talk about unfinished business in reference to difficult people. Last week at the shopping mall, I bumped into a fellow uh, elder from uh, another church, not from this church. When I asked him about his life and ministry, he sighed deeply and said that life was okay, but church ministry was not. He told me that recently he tried to help a member with his family problems, but he was accused of prying into their privacy when he asked him whether there is a problem in his marriage. A few days later, in the buffet fellowship, one of his fellow uh, elders uh, saw this member eating non-stop and jokingly said to him, Hey brother, I saw you eating non-stop. You must have liked the food very much. The member got very angry and accused him for calling him a glutton and greedy and demanded for an apology. Unbelievable, but this is real life. Many things in life are difficult, especially in our relationship with people. And we know that strained relationship can develop uninvited and unexpected. People can pick a quarrel or a fight even if we don't intend to. We just can't run away, right? Every one of us has strained relationship at home with our family members, in school with our schoolmates, or at work uh, with our colleagues. So next week is Chinese New Year, and uh, you are likely to meet friends or relatives whom you are uncomfortable because because of past unpleasant encounter with them. So how do you deal with that? Avoid them? Yes? Well, even if you succeed in doing so, you will still not be happy, I guarantee you. And your heart will not have peace. Strained relationship will continue to be a nagging pain in your life. So what should we do with the pain 
of troubling relationship? Can we remove the pain and live our life joyfully and productively? Well, let us learn from Job's experience. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that uh, we can continue to plow through the book of Job, the, the wisdom book. The Lord, that we may gain wisdom and to live our life in a Christ-like manner so that, Lord, our life will bring you glory. So, Lord, we pray that you will cause us, Lord, to be able to understand what you are speaking to us individually and respond honestly and readily to your call to live this life for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, okay, last week uh, in the sermon from Job chapter 15 entitled, When White Hair is Not Wisdom Highlight, we learn that Elip Hayes called Job a godless man. Yes. Elip Hayes insulted Job and accused him of offending uh, friends who are much older than him and also accused him for attacking God. And then he went into great detail as to how Job's life matches that of the typical wicked man and should be punished immediately. So as we, as we can see at the beginning of uh, this second cycle of dialogue, the temperature is rising and Job's friends are becoming more unfriendly and less sympathetic. So today, in Job's reply, recorded in chapter 16 and 17, we will see Job expressing his uh, great disappointment with his friend and lament his suffering. And then he appeals uh, to God to vindicate his innocence and resolve to hope in God. We know that Job's friends were supposed to come and comfort him, but they are now doing the opposite. They condemn him. They attack him and accuse him for being a hypocrite. When Job responds in verse 2, he calls them miserable comforters. Miserable because they are offering useless counsel to Job, who is suffering, not due to his sin. But they keep telling Job many things, but none serve the purpose. So Job asks in verse 3, shall windy words have an end? Or what provokes you that you answer? Job asks, when are they going to stop offering the empty words? At the same time, he is still cannot understand what caused his friends to angrily condemn him. Just like the encounter of my fellow elders, we just, we just don't know why people can pick a quarrel in every turn and sour the relationship. So in verse 4 and 5, Job tells them that if he is in their position and they are in his position, he can also say the same thing to condemn them. But Job said that he would rather use his words to comfort and encourage them. Job is telling his friend that, hey friend, you are not doing the right thing. You ought to use the right words to comfort me, not condemn me. So the truth is that it is always easy for us to criticize others, yet totally blind to our own weaknesses. I'm sure many of us have met people behaving like that. Talking to people who are oversensitive or hardcore self-righteous, is always frustrating. 
，你们叫所靠普惠啊，爆火 explode 啊 ，OK， 我讲阿伯咧。So when Job talks to these miserable comforters, it is no surprise that it makes him feel like God is using them to punish him. In his case, so in verses six to seventeen, we see Job expressing his sorrow as he finds himself caught in a no-win situation. He feels like God has given him into their hands. Of his cruel friends who attack him and mock at him for not admitting his sin and condemn him for not fearing God. So see, we see in verse six, Job's lament at his dilemma. Job is in a dilemma. What is his dilemma? You see, he said, he says it. He said, if he speaks up, his son, his friend, won't believe him. If he keep quiet, they will take it that he is guilty of sin. So, have you been in such a situation before? Such situation is really difficult to handle, isn't it? Just like that, there's a Chinese saying, "Too new dancing." You know, you're playing music uh, to the cow, literally. Huh? Have you ever done that? Nobody done it. Huh? So, you see. Because when you talk to this kind of people, they don't get it. They don't appreciate it, like a cow. So not only frustrating, it is also a waste of time and a waste of effort. So when people don't understand our situation and keep saying the wrong things, it is very painful, right? It is very painful to talk to them because they simply don't get it. And here we can see Job. Groaning with pain, in verse seven, he laments that God has made his body to be worn away with disease and pain, and make his loved ones and friends to leave him. Surely God has worn me out. He has made desolate all my company. What can Job do if God allows such thing to happen to him? But that is not all. Job says in verse eight. That his skinny and wrinkled body has led his friends to conclude that he must have committed sin. See, you suffer like that, and God is punishing you. What we call this? In Wang Ah, 大人 unjust, right? So you may heard of uh, people uh, said, 死得很冤枉啊 die unjustly. So. When we die, people still believe that we are guilty of something when we are not. That is terrible, isn't it? So surely we need to do something, right? In verses nine to seventeen, Job tells us something remarkable. Pay attention. Job tells us that he has been humbled by the suffering he received from God. And his friend, okay, he say in verse nine, God show him angry face. In verse ten, his friends gang up, gang up to hurt him with scornful words. And in verse eleven, Job says, God put him in the hands of the wicked men. And in verse twelve and thirteen, he describe how his Easy lifestyle was smashed into pieces, and became a target for violent attacks. He set me up as his target. His archers surround me. He slashes open my kidney, and does not spare. He poured out my gall on the ground. Violently attacked and torn apart. God allowed Job to be a target for his self-righteous friend. In verse fourteen, Job's body was broken by wave after wave of attack. He seems to 
be recalling the time when bad news came to him one after another as if they are not going to end. Losing possession, losing children, losing health, and now humiliated by these miserable comforters and don't know when it will stop. By now, we are quite familiar with Job's suffering, but significantly in his lament here is that Job become humble. In verse 15 to 17 tells us that Job was humbled by the suffering he suffered and he would not hide or pretend that he is not or he is okay. You know that sometimes we may feel ashamed of our suffering and we try to keep away from other people and avoid talking about our suffering. But for Job, he says in verse 15 that he has soaked sackcloth upon his skin. What does it mean? It means that he put aside his branded clothing huh, and put on sackcloth. Job refused to wear fine clothing to cover his wrinkled body, which is full of boys from head to toe. Here we see Job humbled himself to the, to the dust. He said he laid his strength in the dust. That means that he refused to be honored as he was honored before. He accept his suffering instead of pretending that he is okay. And in verse 16, he cried over his lowly estate. My face is red with weeping and on my eyelids is deep darkness. And instead of fighting back or hiding from people, Job offered sincere prayer. Look at verse 17. Although there is no violence in my hands, no blood in my hand, and my prayer is pure. In the midst of suffering, intense suffering, intense suffering, physically and emotionally, it is easy for any one of us to respond violently when our friends attack us unjustly. But Job learned humility. This is counterculture. Job is countering the culture in this world that tell us to play the blame game and take revenge when there is opportunity. What can we learn from Job's response here? The way to deal with suffering is to accept suffering and do the humble self-examining. Learn to accept what we cannot change. Let suffering soften our hearts, not harden it. As the Bible tells us, do not take revenge for the Lord has said, Vengeance is mine, I will repair, I will repay. And Apostle Paul says in Acts chapter 14, verse 22, through many tribulations, we must enter the kingdom of God. There is no other way. This is the biblical theology of suffering. And Christians are destined to suffer for our faith. First, Paul says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 3, that no one be moved by this affliction, suffering. For you yourself know that we are destined for this. Remember that Jesus enters our suffering to remove suffering. In his stripes, we are healed. So we must let our suffering become a blessing as Christ did for us on the cross. If Jesus can suffer for nothing, we should take up our cross and follow him. What else can we learn from Job?
Job appeals for vindication of his innocence and endure the suffering. From chapter 16, verse 18 to, to 17, chapter 17, 16. First, Job sincerely appealed to God, appealed for God to vindicate him. Chapter 16, verse 18 to chapter 17, verse 3. Why? Because Job is not suffering due to his sin. He is suffering something beyond his control. God is in control. Sometimes God has allowed, something God has allowed in his life. For what? For God's glory. So you see in verse 17, Job says that he offers no violence but pure prayer. In other words, Job offers sincere prayer with a clear conscience. How do we know? Verse 18, he said, O earth, cover not my blood. And let my cry find no resting place. Job calls out to the earth, this poetically, yeah, of course, poetically speaking, is a figure of speech. Don't cover my guilt if I have any. And if my prayer is not pure and sincere, let it go nowhere. No resting place. In other words, let my prayer go unanswered. If I'm guilty of sinning, Job is echoing what the psalmist says in Psalm 66, verse 18. If I cherish iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. So this is remarkable because in such dire situation, we would expect him to pray, to pray for the downfall of his miserable comforters and find a fault in them and hit at them. But no, in verse 19, Job turns to heaven and asks God to be his witness. God be my witness. He said, even now, behold, my witness is in heaven. Job, look up instead of giving up with them. In other words, Job pinned his hope of vindication in heaven in God, but he will ensure that he has a clean hand and a pure heart when he approaches God in prayer. Verse 20, Job offers his broken heart when his friend scorn at him and run him down. He pours out his sorrow to God so that in verse 21, he would argue the case of a man with God as a son of man does with his neighbor. Difficult to interpret. Difficult to understand, right? Job is saying that he needs someone to mediate between him and God. As a person mediates between neighbors, you know, when the neighbors quarrel. Job needs a mediator. Job recognizes that he is a great distance from God. And he is flawed and a weak person. He cannot plead for himself. And he needs a friend to mediate and plead for his innocence. So here, brothers and sisters, is the Jesus Christ, the Son of God, in view. We need Jesus, the Lamb of God, the Lion King, to be our mediator. Only Jesus can resolve the impasses between God, between God and Job. Only Jesus can defend Job in the presence of God and guarantee his innocence. So if God will vindicate his innocence, Job can live in peace and die confidently meaningfully with clear conscience and integrity in other words job can die in dignity verse 22 
For when a few years have come, I shall go the way from which I shall not return. What does it mean? When a Christian dies, he or she will leave this temporal world and go on a long, long journey of no return to live a new and eternal life with God in the new heaven and new earth. And this is made possible by Jesus, the Son of God, who died on the cross to secure the acceptance of sinners into God's kingdom. Job says in chapter 17, verse 1 to 3, that although his spirit is broken and the grave is ready, he is not worried. Even his friends are still mocking and provoking him. So as far as Job is concerned, he has done with the world and he has God who will vindicate him. And he say in verse 3, chapter 17, verse 3, Lay down a pledge for me with you. Who is there who will put up security for me? Job is saying, Lord, let me be assured that you will hear my case and you will clear my name. There are two things that we can learn from here. First, we must entrust our strained relationship to God and be resolved in Jesus Christ, our mediator. Number two, we must be ready to meet God. We must be conscious that every day we live, every day that we live, we are just one step between us and the grave. The grave is ever ready, so we must be ready. Like Job, when he has finished his, this business of petition to God, to vindicate him of his innocence. He is able to live in hope in the circumstances that he is in now. So as the saying goes, when we are ready to die, then we begin to live. As we see in the rest of the chapter, of the verses in chapter 17. In spite of the fact that Job's suffering will continue. Job believes that his cruel friend will not triumph over him because in verse 4, he says that God has denied them wisdom to know God's truth. In verse 5, he says that God condemned them for breaking the secret law of friendship for personal gain. In this case, is their spiritual pride manifested in cruel treatment inflicted on a poor, sick, and innocent man like Job. Now, such a lack of compassion will also result in their children not being able to see the truth and learn it. Job says the eyes of their children will fail. As the saying goes, monkey see, monkey do. Children will learn from their parents. As the cruel act is perpetuated in the family. Look at verse 6. It tells us that Job is being made a loving stock, a byword of the, pro of the people, a, a, a reproach of men. I am one before whom men speak. Verse 7, Job cried so much that he almost caught, could not see properly and his body is only a shadow of his former self. And verse 8, it says that the upright people were appalled, were appalled at the treatment the righteous Job is receiving and will rise up against the godless comforters. Verse number 9, he says that he will just keep on being righteous. Job is saying that he himself, listen carefully, and all who are appalled at what is happening to him at the hands of his friends, will continue to do what they have been doing. In other words, Job will be emboldened by the encouragement of the righteous people. People who sympathize with him. People would do the right thing to encourage him and he will grow stronger and stronger. 
he won't quit. Job is resolved to maintain his integrity. Job isn't going to do anything against his conscience by telling a lie and admit that under pressure, admit that he has uh, uh, some secret sin that God is punishing him for. No, Job will maintain his innocence and continue to live in integrity and even grow stronger. That's what it says. Verse number nine, yet the righteous holds his way and he who has clean hands grows stronger and stronger. In other words, Job will defy the odds, all odds and thrive in his suffering. In spite of his foolish friends causing him pain and losing sleep, he will not end his life as we see in the last seven verses. In verse 10 to 12, Job laments that he can't find a wise man among his three friends and his life is shattered by them. His friends make night into day and say the light is near the darkness. What does it mean? Night into day means no night, no day. Lah. Bo mi, bo jit lah. Job cannot sleep at night and is awake the whole night as if the night is in the day. You got it? <laughs> and they say the light is near the darkness. Telling Job, lah, they're telling Job that the night will be over lah. and when the day comes. But the coming of the day is not going to bring Job any comfort or peace. Why? Because of the brokenness and the suffering in his heart. So no thanks to his friend who are causing him to have sleepless night. And finally, in verses 13 to 16, Job rejects the idea of ending his life. He says in verse 15, if I go to my grave now, where then is my hope? Who will see my hope? Job is saying that ending his life is not the solution to his suffering. He will live as an example of trusting God and hope in him for other sufferers to see and be encouraged to do the same. We know that Job was eventually vindicated by God. And the Bible tells us in this book, at the end of this book, that the life God restored in Job is beyond the imagination of Job and all of us. So in conclusion, Job has demonstrated to us that in the depth of his sorrow and pain that he cannot understand he did not follow the way of the world but look up to god for vindication as for all of us who suffer let us take steps to finish the unfinished business Don't let strained relationship rob you of your peace and joy. Don't fall prey to anger. Don't dwell in sadness. Don't run away but turn to God in prayer. Apostle Paul in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7 say, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, that means request, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. To God. Look up. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in whom? In Christ Jesus, our Savior, our Mediator. All our differences 
can be fully resolved only in Jesus. In this Chinese New Year, in the name of Jesus, let us forgive those who offended us and ask for forgiveness from the people that we have wronged. Be a friend to everyone. In this new year, in this Chinese new year, to be more specific, do a spring cleaning in your heart if you have not done so. Get right with God. Love our enemies and live happily. Sing and quiet. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for this encouragement. Though we are not sure how far we can go to bear the pain of people who attack us, people who just simply don't like us. But Lord, we thank you for the example of Job that he did not give up, but he looked up. So help us, O oh Lord, in our prayer. Guide us. Grant us wisdom to know how to pray. Grant us the courage, Lord, to look up and to find peace and strength in and through Jesus our Lord. Thank you, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Before we